Yes, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Welcome once more to Retro Spectrum. I'm Ewan Spence as we go deep uh, into the history of the uh, home computer and the gaming scene. And today we're going to do kind of a follow up, but not a follow up uh, to my last review, which is Shockwave Rider, which uh, you will find back here uh, on Twitch on the YouTube channel uh, and do search on that as well. And at the end of it, it's like it's a three lane game. It's really hard. It doesn't give me any sort of feeling that I'm being rewarded. I'm not enjoying it. And uh, and thanks also to the people um, on the uh, Reddit ZX Spectrum who said, yep, that's great. Keep that. Keep keep going that style of review. Don't keep playing Shockwave Riders because if you drive, that's evil. So I thought, well, you know, there are other games out there that were hard, that uh, did have that sort of multi-lane feeling, uh, but they also did feel rewarding and, and they created a good positive loop in the gameplay. So I thought that is what I'm going to review next. And that means it is time to play and review... Green Beret. Uh, Imagine Software, uh, 1986, licensed from Konami, from an arcade game, and it's pretty close to the arcade game. There's more sprites and uh, colours and less colour clash um, in the arcade game version of Green Beret. Uh, but it is all here, including the most annoying siren ever. So, uh, you'll have noticed, of course, uh, that we've got some new graphics, and I've done a new little overlay and everything, and you might, might just recognise this stripe of colour here that's going on that I'm sitting over there. In which case, congratulations, you know where we're going. Right, uh, Green Beret. Uh, that's the loading screen, so let's uh, just uh, get the game kicked off in the background as well. Uh, and we can take a delight at what's going on here with the title. Right, that should be us now. There we are. <laughs> as always, uh, I'm not using a quick shot. Too. I must try and find one actually. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll put that on a Kickstarter. So I think right now it's in a PlayStation controller or so with the joypad. Anyway, anyway uh, Kempston joystick coming up. I'm just going to do a quick run through. Uh, I've been playing this a little bit. It has to be said uh, over the last week. Uh, and get ready for the siren. <laughs> Yep, it's the most annoying spectrum sound, and you're going to hear it a lot over the next ooh, 10 minutes or so. And I'm dead already, because I went for the uh, analog stick and not the D-pad. This is a D-pad game. Controls, well, you've got uh, move left, move right, uh, down. Um, does it either go onto the ground or down the ladders? Up, we'll let you climb ladders, or let you jump in the air. We've got a flamethrower, which we can use with a space bar. Um... You know, it, it might feel that the, the flamethrower is quite precious, but you die really quickly in this game. So um, you might as well use it while you've got it. Uh, the reason you've got that uh, flamethrower um, is to help you get through the first sort of mini level baddie. Uh, we will see in a second. And thankfully, though, of course, uh, you only have to face it one more thing to jump up for you. No, not me. You can just see it sneaking in there, and it's game over. <laughs> you can just see the mortal launcher sneaking inside the screen. So, let's have another go. <sighs> the siren. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Look at that. One lane of travel, where you can fight things. You've got a middle lane of travel, of where you can fight things. Uh, and... Arguably, if you go to the top of the bunkers, you have the top lane of travel. So again, much like Shockwave Rider we did last week, there are three ways of travelling through the level. You've got a really rubbish weapon, which in this case is your combat knife. You've got the enemies that are running faster than you, so it makes it really hard to turn around and fight them. Uh, and you've got the added bonus of people who jump up in the air. So we'll just... Gotcha. Ha-ha. <laughs> but dies after that. There we go. Game over. But, now here's the thing. I've managed to get about half a screen further on. It's not much. But it actually feels like an accomplishment. Siren time. You get used to that siren a lot. Uh, and remember, the Spectrum didn't have that volume control. Um, didn't go through the TV. Certainly not the uh, 48K and the 128Ks. Uh, this did not play on 16k. Don't, don't even bother asking. You know, this just ran off of the sound chip that you had in the Spectrum. So it would ha it would be on or off. There'd be no volume control. You couldn't 
this isn't a game you could sort of play in the middle of the night and hope that your parents didn't notice that you're actually playing it. They were gonna go. It's, you were gonna hear it. You know, later on with the plus twos and the plus threes, and the plus two eight. Never forget the plus two eight. Uh, you went through the TV, so you could use the TV's volume. Uh, now, am I gonna get a chance to show you why the flamethrower is so useful? I might do. 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 We just need to carry gas because you can get get it a distance. Except the space bar was so far away from the controller. Uh, I didn't get through it. But again, it's that sense of accomplishment. That time I didn't get as far. But it's just... Where shot me right when you died, you felt you were wanting to blame the game. When you die in Green Beret, you feel like you want to blame yourself. You feel like, I could have done that better. I could have done that smarter. It's more responsive. The controls would let you do it. And that, that is the mark of a good gameplay. The... the constantly is giving you small rewards and slightly bigger rewards um you know, there's, there's multiple levels to green beret i've never got past the second set of rockets you know it said there's like one two three four captives to find. i've never found even one of them does that mean that i i hate the game no it means i really enjoy it it's yeah, i'm glad i'm not playing it in the arcade where you'd have to spend lots of money just to get better at it uh, but you know, but even now, just playing this again, there's just a nice rhythm that comes along to the game, uh, and it really just, you know, it feels good. It feels like it feels better. It feels like you get a better idea of what's going on in the game, and you feel like you know that you can actually get somewhere with this game. Uh, don't do that. I thought you'd froze there. It's a little classic. And even when we don't have, you know, if I timed that jump a little bit earlier, I would have got it. So, um, in terms of reviews, let, let, let's let's be pretty clear on this one. Green Beret is a hard game. Uh, by modern standards, it's incredibly hard. Um, but even when you look back at the Spectrum games from the mid to late mid mid 80s period that we had here, this was always a hard game as well. And and there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's, there's nothing wrong with being hard. Look, I've got to the missile rocket launcher thing, because it's missile base. I got a bit further that time. So yes, it is a hard game, but it's a game that is really, really rewarding. Uh, the, you know, the mistakes are yours. I mean, there's lots of subtle things, like your life's with a sickle and hammer. You know, you're, 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 you're playing as the Russian, not the American, uh, which in the mid-80s uh, was... was Curious, curious. Especially as the the Americans seem to be dressed as Siberian soldiers with their big jackets on because they can't handle the cold. But it's got everything you'd like, like in a good action arcade game. It's okay. It's not a great big 3D shooter like you would get with modern gaming, uh, but it's providing you that same sort of thrill and accomplishment is doom. A constant wave of enemies, lots of things to be getting on with. Can we actually do a jump back there and get all of them? No, but a jump doesn't kill you. The listen to the siren that kills you. It just gets you right there every single time. Why are you still playing it? So uh, yeah, Green Beret. It's it's hard. It's fun. It's everything that Shockwave Rider would like to be, but it isn't. You know the color clash. You know you can clearly see you've got color clash going on. Um, it's effectively a monochrome game with just just a hint of what's going on. But when you're playing, you don't really notice it. It all works. It all works. I think that's the best thing to do it. Uh, I mean, just look how smooth that was. Look how terrible that death was. It's just, yes. It's just fantastic. It's Green Beret. More of the same, please. More of the same. Green Beret. Yeah, definitely uh, worth a, a look again at uh, that one. Uh, Green Beret from Konami. Um, it's a ZX Spectrum game, so um, you all know how to get a hold of your Spectrum games as well. And yeah, a lot of love put into that. A lot of great action. Very good curve, even though it's set as a quite a difficult curve. Is it worth a look again for a good 15 20 minute blast of arcade fun? Very much so. This one gets a recommend.